there guys, Aaron Charlie here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dogs Drovers fan channel. It's the second of our videos today, we're talking about the Carabao Cup draw, the Papa John's Trophy draw for the groups, and also we, also, we do have a transfer story uh, about what's next for us in the transfer market as well, which we're going to go through uh, in this video as well at the end. So... Before we get started with the draws and the result of the draws, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss a YouTube video, and let's get straight into it. So, we're going to start with the Carabao Cup uh, draws. So, we're going to start off uh, with round one. So, we're going to start with the north. So, this is what was drawn. Sheffield Wednesday will host Huddersfield Town. Derby County will host Salford City. Hartlepool United will host Crew Alexandra. Shrewsbury Town will host Lincoln City, Mansfield Town will host Preston North End, Port Vale will host Sunderland, Sheffield United will host Carlisle United, Blackpool will host Middlesbrough, Harrogate will uh, host Rochdale, Stoke will host Fleetwood, Walsall will host Doncaster Rovers, Oldham Athletic will host Tranmere Rovers, Rotherham United vs Accrington Stanley, Barrow vs Scunthorpe, Hull City vs Wigan, Bolton vs Barnsley, Nottingham Forest vs Bradford City, and Blackburn Rovers against Morecambe. Now we look at the south side. Cambridge United vs Swindon Town, Exeter City vs Wickham Wanderers, Crawley Town vs Gillingham, Burton Albion vs Oxford United, Coventry City vs Northampton, Ipswich Town versus Newport County, Forest Green Rovers versus Bristol City, Reading versus Swansea, Cardiff versus Sutton United, Bournemouth versus MK Dons, Bristol Rovers versus Cheltenham Town, Peterborough United versus Plymouth Argyle, Leighton Orient versus QPR, Stevenage versus Luton, Millwall versus Portsmouth, Birmingham versus Colchester, and finally Charlton against AFC Wimbledon. So that is the uh, groups, the north and the south, the fixtures, uh, the north-south fixtures for the Carabao Cup round one. So, of course, since this is the Donny fan channel, we're going to go through our fixture in more detail than just our fixture. We are away at League 2 Walsall. Now, of course, uh, they've got a brand new manager. Uh, they've, got a, they've got a host of new players. They've unveiled the kits. They're getting ready for the brand new season. And I think Walsall is still going to be a dangerous opponent to some extent. I think that Walsall have to be taken seriously. They're, they were a former League One club a few years back. Uh, they're in League Two now. They didn't have the best end to a season last season, but they're going to be fired up under new direction, under new uh, management, uh, under the new boss. And they're going to be, want to be up for this and try and go far in the Carabao Cup or as far as they can. Um, so I'd be very, very interested to see what happens with this, but I am excited as always. Now we have to go through the Papa John's Trophy Group. So we're going to go through all the groups and then just share my thoughts on our group. Uh, so let's start off then with Groups A and B. So Group A will have Colchester United, Gillingham, Ipswich Town and West Ham United under 21s in the Southern Group A. In Southern Group B, we have Wimbledon, Sutton United, Portsmouth and Crystal Palace under 21s. Group C in the Southern Stage, we have MK Dons, Wickham, Burton and Aston Villa under 21s. Uh, group D, we'll have Forest Green Rovers, Northampton, Walsall and Brighton and Hove Albion under 21s. Southern Stage Group E will be Exeter, Bristol Rovers, Cheltenham and Chelsea under 21s. Group F will be Plymouth Argyle, Swindon Town, Newport and Arsenal under 21s. And then Group G will be Crawley, Leighton Orient, Charlton and Southampton under, 20, under 21s. And Group H will be Oxford United, Stevenage, Cambridge and Tottenham Hotspur under 21s. Into the Northern Group stage, Group A, Carlisle United, Hartlepool United, Morecambe and Everton under 21s. Group B will be Oldham Athletic, Salford City, Tranmere Rovers and Leeds United under 21s. Group C will be Wigan Athletic, Crew Alexandra, Shrewsbury Town and Wolves under 21s. Group D will be Port Vale, Rochdale, Bolton and Liverpool under 21s. Group E will be Rotherham United, Scunthorpe United, Doncaster Rovers and the under 21s of Manchester City. 
yeah, I'm going to share my thoughts on that group in a little bit. Um, group F will be Bradford City, Sunderland, Lincoln City and under-21s of Manchester United. Group G will be Accrington, Stanley, Barrow, Fleetwood and Leicester City under-21s. And finally, Group H will be Harrogate, Mansfield, Sheffield Wednesday and the under-21 squad of Newcastle United. So, that is the Papa John's Trophy Groups North and South. Now, obviously, like I said, we're just going to be focusing on our group. Uh, comment down below how your team's feeling about your group, uh, whoever you support. Whether you support the under-21 squads of the Premier League teams, whether you support the, uh, the lower league clubs. Comment down below how your squad's feeling right now, because I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be excited about that one. But we've got two, that's right, two... Yorkshire sides, Rotherham United and Scunthorpe United, and argu arguably the top under-21 side in this country. Probably the best under-21 side in this country, Manchester City, arguably. They've got some wonderful young players. Liam Delap, uh, Matt Smith's in the under-squad that, we, that was loaned to us from Man City. Um... Uh, E.K. Pon uh, Pozo, I think his name is, or Punzo. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, you know, Cla Claudio Gomez. Claudio Gomez. Um, wow. They're, they've got some pretty decent players. Um, I mean, am I excited about them, uh, the match? I mean, I think the rule still applies from the previous season. I think it's still uh, we host the under-21s team at our ground. So... Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, I can get the money together to go and watch the, the Man City match. Um, am I excited about the challenge of facing arguably one of the greatest academy teams in English football? Yeah, because I think it gives our team a decent opportunity to have a chance of winning this tournament. Because I think we can get through, I, th I think we can get through Scunthorpe. Man City will be a challenge, Rotherham will be a challenge. So... I, I, I like it. I like it. I think it'll be, it should be uh, interesting to see what happens with that one. But uh, that is the cup draws. Let me know what you think, Rovers fans. Walsall and the Carabao War 1 and Rotherham, Scunthorpe and Man City under 21s in our Papa John's trophy group. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Finally today, then we've got a transfer story. It's all about what we do next in the transfer market. So, uh, the positions Richie Wellens has prioritised for his next wave of recruitment at Dogster Rovers. So, a left-sided winger and a holding midfielder are the two positions in his Dogster Rovers squad that Richie Wellens is looking to fill next. The Rovers boss is hopeful for significant progress on both in the coming days as the players prepare for return to pre-season training. With the signings of Carl Noyle, Roshaw Williams and Ben Close, Wellens has begun to build his new look squad and Rovers were poised to complete the signing of an experienced and versatile left back which is of course Tommy Rowe um, as the free press which went to print giving Mullins his completely defensive line so we've got Tommy Rowe, Carl Noyle, Roshan Williams and Ben Close in the midfield as well uh, so he will now turn his attention uh, to higher up the pitch and has already held positive conversations with several targets. So he's told the free press, I'm speaking to three left-sided attackers at the moment. Um, a couple of them are difficult to get because we're trying our best to get the best ones in. But if we don't, then we move down the order. All three are good players and we'd be happy to have any of them, but we're trying to get the best one in first. Obviously, he didn't mention who was the best one. Uh, <laughs> we need to get in a left side attacking player and then we can actually pick a team. Come the first day of preseason, we'd have what I think is a decent League One team. And from then, whatever cherries we can get on top of that will determine in the division we can finish. Uh, the defensive midfield berth is not quite as pressing for Wellens, who is intent on giving AJ Greaves an opportunity to impress in pre-season, which I think is a great uh, sign of respect from the manager. But he insists the position is a vital one for how his team is to play. Uh, Wellens uh, said to the free press, because we're going to be a possession-based team, we're going to be uh, to attack, that holding midfield role is absolutely pivotal. It's pivotal that whoever plays there will can need, read the game and is athletic enough to vacate the middle of the pitch and cover areas that were left open. It's a massive role. Then he goes on to say this, and this leads to a daily reports we did earlier today. 
He says, I don't think John Bostock is that player. I do think he's a very talented player who can play in one of the midfield positions further forward. So therefore, we do need a holding midfielder because it's going to be vital uh, part of the team. So basically, he's come out and said... Uh, Bostock can play further forward. Now, this says to me that potentially... Now, this links into the story that we broke uh, just a few hours ago, uh, that John Bostock, there was talks, uh, according to the Star, uh, that he was on the transfer list of Darren Moore at Sheffield Wednesday, of course, our former boss. It's, it's weird saying Darren Moore at Sheffield Wednesday. I never thought I'd say that a year ago. Um, but... But he's apparently on the transfer list. Obviously, we can't confirm that at this stage. Free Press is saying that Rovers will be open to the, to the idea of letting him go. But obviously, we can't confirm that at that stage. That's what the Free Press has said. That's what the star has been saying about Sheffield Wednesday. Um, for now, he is our. For now, at least, he is our player. John Bostock is still a Rovers player. We still treat him, you know, as one of our family. We still treat him as like he's still part of the team. We still treat him as one of our own. And, you know, he'll always be one of our own, even if he leaves the club. Like, all the players that leave the club, if they come back or not, you know, they always leave and... Uh, they, they always arrive and leave or come back as, you know, one of one of our own, one of our second family. So, you know, we always treat the players with respect. We always give them the respect they deserve. And, um, you know, we'll continue to do that with John Bostock, whether he stays or goes. But um, at least from what Wellens is saying, he wants Bostock playing further forward. It sounds like Wellens does want to use Bostock to, to a capacity. So um, it's really nice to, to hear that and hopefully try and put these Sheffield Wednesday talks to bed. I didn't, you know, like every news article, whether it's free press, star, any news source, I don't believe it's official until he's holding up the Rover shirt. I don't believe it's official. For now, I just take it with a pinch of salt and say, if I was a fan, would I be happy with this? Would I be mad about this? If I were, if Boss stopped leaving is true, would I be mad about it to an extent? Because I think when he started in January last season, I think that he looked like a man against boys. He was the physical dominating presence in that midfield. I think he was an amazing presence in that midfield. So I think he can be a wonderful player for this football club. He just needs the right guidance. I think Wellens can do that. So I'd be very mad if we let go of Bostock. But like I said, take it with a pinch of salt with that one. So for now, at least, he's still our player. And I think getting him to play further forward is great signs because I think it's a sign that we're going to utilise the best of his ability and play that kind of physical presence further forward, which is great. Um, so I'm really happy. I'm really happy. And the fact we're looking for left-sided players, there's three apparently we're speaking to, um, and we're trying to get the best ones in first, which is amazing. We're trying to get the number one targets in. Apparently, Carl Noyle was the number one target at that position. Apparently, uh, there was talks that Roshan Williams was the number one choice. You know, negotiations began almost immediately, apparently, uh, according to reports. So, obviously, again, we don't know how true that is, but if that is true, and those two at right back and centre back, and even Ben Close at centre midfield, and Tommy Rowe at left back, uh, they were the first choices then. You know, fair play to our recruitment team if we've got the first choices in, in every position so far. And long may that continue. Uh, obviously, in terms of loan players, it is going to be interesting. I did see Liam Hoden reply to someone... Uh, about the goalkeeper situation, you know, are we bringing in a goalkeeper? What's happening? Is it just Lewis Jones and Ben Bottom who signed his pro deal uh, this past week? And um, you know, Liam said I'll bring an update tomorrow. So fingers crossed, we'll bring you another daily reports tomorrow morning or sometime tomorrow. Uh, to give you an update on that situation along with any other stories that break uh, in between that time. But for now, guys, that is going to be it. My name is Aaron Chandler from Forever Football, DRFC, keep living the Rover side. And that, my friends, is full time. Rover side, I thank you very much indeed. Rover's Hill!